So, on the flight back from my recent trip to the East Coast, it um, was a long enough flight looking for some entertainment, and the, the movie that happened to be screening was Crazy Rich Asians. Anybody else seen it? Okay, a few people have seen it. Both the title and the content are somewhat problematic in certain ways, but it, you know, it's also uh, an entertaining movie in a couple of ways. But the opening scene was very striking. So the opening scene takes place a couple decades earlier than the rest of the movie. And it's at a very posh, historic London hotel on a cold, rainy fall night. And uh, a couple of Chinese women, um, a little bit older, but with, uh, with children in tow, come in, looking a little bit bedraggled, and claim to have a reservation at the hotel. Well, with feigned politeness and thinly veiled uh, judgment and animosity, both the concierge and the staff basically rebuff them. And uh, they end up having to go outside place a phone call from some of those famous uh, London phone booths that are uh, now only there for decorative purposes in the cell phone age, but actually served a function back then. And then they walk back into the hotel, and this time the concierge threatens to call the police on them, and at that very moment, the owner of the hotel comes down, brushes right by the concierge, embraces the Chinese women, and brings them in as honored guests who are soon to be the new owners of the hotel. <laughs> and the concierge, of course, has a horrified expression on his face at that moment. Okay, so this is a little humorous and this is just a movie, but uh, another example, which I'm very hesitant to bring up, but I will, but let me couch it as saying, absolutely, if you hear yourself in this story, absolutely no criticism or judgment is to be interpreted from this. I absolutely promise that this is an event that actually occurred here a little over a year ago. Some of you may remember that I believe it was June of last year, um, the director of Partners for Change came and made a presentation to us in the lounge after services. And this was at the time when St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church was still uh, using our parish hall on Sundays. And when she first arrived here, she attended our worship service as well. I think she said it was three times. Uh, three different people, uh, without asking which of the two churches she was looking for, uh, very graciously started to direct her over to St. Matthew's. But of course she wasn't here for St. Matthew's. She was here for St. Bartholomew's. Now, there was absolutely no, I'm certain there was absolutely no malice. The assumption was a perfectly reasonable one to make, but it was still an assumption. And it was still one that perhaps could have led in the direction of that opening scene from the movie I just described. So now on to today's gospel. At first glance, it looked, as, as I was reading and praying and meditating on it, I was like, Seriously, Jesus, really? I mean, do, do people actually need this lecture? And we have to remember that Christ's disciples were essentially adolescent males, or if they were out of that life stage, biologically speaking, mentally, they were still often in adolescence. Just look at the interaction between him and Peter or Thomas or James and John throughout the Gospel, and some of the times you're just like, I think I just had that conversation with my 15-year-old son. And I think it's in that spirit that he's talking about, well, sit at the lowest place in the banquet so that, you know, you basically, you don't get pumped, uh, to use the modern-day parlance. And most of us are thinking, you know, I really didn't need that lecture. But if we delve underneath it, I think it's what we heard in Hebrews, perhaps, that gives us the deeper underlying purpose of this gospel parable. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for in doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Have you ever stopped and wondered what the experience of entertaining an angel might be like? It would be wonderful. Have you ever stopped
stop and ponder the fact that chances are at some point in your life you have done so? You can probably remember those occasions. I've spoken to some of you one-on-one -on -one and you've recounted stories where I thought, hmm, sounds like you entertain an angel on that occasion. These are amazing occasions and if they are at all congruent with the biblical narrative, they're ones that you never expected and you did not perhaps recognize until after the fact. And even now, there's, there's a veil of mystery over it. We can never know for sure. But chances are pretty good it has happened in your life, and I give you a 100% guarantee it can happen in your life. But it can only happen if you're in the posture that Jesus suggests in today's gospel narrative. See, there's a certain kind of forgetting or unlearning that we may need to do in order to give ourselves the capacity to entertain those angels. I find it fascinating that somehow, and this is not a new thing, it's centuries, if not millennia old, there's this unspoken cultural narrative that being basically a white-collar worker, somebody who has a fair amount of resources and, above all, the capacity for rest and leisure, makes us more honorable people. Let's stop and deconstruct that for a second. If all the white-collar workers of the world were to go on strike tomorrow, chances are it would still sort of manage to plunk along. But if all the people who do the grunt work, the labor, the ones who pave the roads, the ones who snake the toilets, if they all disappear tomorrow, I don't think I want to try waking up and living in that world. I don't know about you, but I think we're all in agreement that would be a very unpleasant day on planet Earth. So somehow this notion that there is a built-in social hierarchy or, or honorableness about being in that su supposedly upper category falls apart immediately, and yet it's something very subtle in our minds that I think we need to unlearn. And I believe that the lesson from the movie I brought up Hebrews from today's gospel is when we manage to unlearn it, when we manage to show true hospitality, and true hospitality means, first of all, having completely open arms and open doors to the newcomer, and secondly, no matter how much you think you know who this person is, which box they fit in, deliberately choosing to not know that information deliberately choosing to be completely ignorant and to receive them as they are and to be willing to be totally surprised by what you receive. It's only in that posture that I believe we are truly open to entertaining those angels and to receiving the unbelievable rewards and wonders that go with that. So I'm going to leave you a Labor Day challenge. I think it's absolutely appropriate for Labor Day because tomorrow our country takes a day off, although not everybody gets a day off, ironically, many of the laborers don't, to celebrate labor, to lift up those who do the back-breaking work that makes things work for all of us. And my Labor Day challenge is Look around your life at all of those who labor with you, or especially the ones who are in your mind, the label might be the ones who labor for you. Because if they're the ones who labor for you, gosh, it's 